last lecture I have discussed about the characteristic features of slime mold that is mixomycota, eumycota, characteristic features of subdivisions mastigomycotina, jagomycotina, where you have seen that the characteristic features of mastigomycotina or jagomycotina are common to some extent because in both the groups Sinocytic mycelium is present, that is devoid of any cross wall. Their reproduction is almost normal, either isogamous or heterogamous. But the sexual spores are of different types. In one, it is oospore, and in Jagomycotina, it is zygospores, the typical spore of Jagomycotina. Now, in my next lecture, I will cover the characteristic features of Ascomycotina, Basidiomycotina and Deuteromycotina. Now the characteristic features of Ascomycotina. <laughs> the somatic body of Ascomycotina composed of profusely branched thin-walled hyphae which are basically septate in nature. That is provided with a cross wall. The cross wall or septa in this group is always with a central pore which sometimes may be associated with particulate matters called oronin body. Now you see the diagram of a hypha which is septa in nature. The arrow indicates the presence of septa. This septa, if you see in a cross section, you will find the typical circular pore called septal pore present inside. Within a population of hyphae in the nature, one can find three basic types of nuclei, two of which are haploid and parental type and other type is mutated one as shown in the diagram. These two are haploid parental type of nuclei which may undergo mutation in nature and these two are the mutated version of the parental type. Sometimes during anastomosis within the substratum fusion between nuclei may take place and as a result one can find five different types of nuclei two are of parental type two homozygous diploid and one heterozygous diploid motile cells are totally absent in this group but asexual reproduction takes place simply by means of non-motile aplanospores which are produced on the stock-like structure called conidiophore. This conidiophore actually bear a terminal small cell called conidiogenous cell from which the conidia cut off. Now you see the diagram 
how conidiospores or conidia are produced from the sterigmata of the conidiophore. In Aspergillus, large number of conidiospores are being differentiated from the sterigmata or the conidiogenous cells. This is the conidia produced terminally on the conidiophore in pyriculary agrisi. In trichoderma viridi, again this type of non-motile aplanospores are produced at their tip. Now, this conidiophores may aggregate sometimes to form some macroscopic fractifications. This aggregation may be of various type. One is cinema or corimium. In the picture, you can see the cinema of penicillium claviformi, where the conidiophores are united and conidia are differentiated at the apex of such cinema. Now, it is the carimium of Ophiostoma ulmi where you can see the conidiophores are closely aligned or produced, but their terminal portion remain free from their unity. From the tip of the conidiogenous cells, conidia are produced or differentiated. Now, the most important type of aggregation is sporodochium. It is basically a hemispherical fractification being consists of two parts. One is basal stroma part composed of compactly arranged hyphae from which the aerial conidiophores are produced bearing small unicellular conidia. This is the structure of sporodochium of fusarium species where you can see that from conidiospore the macroconidia and microconidia are being differentiated. Next type of aggregation is acervulus. It is basically a saucer shaped structure, again composed of a basal part and an upper or aerial part. Basal part composed of a mycelial structure, but the aerial fertile part is very small. And within the fertile part, one can find small conidiophores bearing terminal conidia. But it differs from sporodochium in that in acervulus, stiff, brown, bristle-like structure called CT are present. So, in acervulus, conidiophores and CT remain intermingled. The next type of fractification is the pycnidium, which is basically a flush shaped structure of which covering is produced by the hyphal mat. Inside the flush shaped cavity, the conidiogenous cells are present from which conidia are developed. The typical sex organ of Ascomycotina are antheridium and ascogonium. Antheridium is the male sex organ and ascogonium is the female sex organ. However, in some cases, the ascogonium may be absent or in some cases, the antheridium may be absent also. But these two male and female sex organs usually fuses with each other and gives rise to the sexual spores which is 
known as ascospores, which are produced in a sac-like covering called ascus. Within each ascus, eight number of ascospores are usually present, but their number may be four also, as in Neurospora tetrasperma. Thus, ascospores of Ascomycotina are endogenous in nature. Now, these ascus containing ascospores are grouped into a typical fractification called asco curves, which are produced by the aggregation of both fertile and sterile hyphae, and different types of asco curves are recorded, of which one is gymnothesium, where you can find that the ascus remain intermingled with the normal hyphae, vegetative hyphae, and a typical peridium or covering is absent as found in the gymnoascus. In the second type of asco curve, that is clastothesium, peridium is present, which is composed of sterile hyphae. These are circular ball-like structure, may be provided with projections or external hyphae, or may not be. However, inside the covering, the ascus containing ascospores are present. Next type of asco curve is called perithesium, which is a flush surf structure from the base of which the ascus and ascospores develop. In all the cases, you see that ascospores are endogenous and are confined within the sac-like structure that is the ascus. In the next type of ascocarp, that is apothecium, a typical hymenial layer is present, which is composed of both fertile and sterile hyphae, that is the ascus containing ascospores remain intermingled with some sterile hyphae, that is the paraphysis. As apothecium type of ascocarp are mainly saucer sept provided with a concave hymenial layer and the basal part is composed of completely sterile hyphae. So this is called exipalum and this is called hymenium. Now in this group particularly the dicaryophase is dominant as well as prominent and it is parasitic on the haplophase. Dicaryophase is characteristic feature of Ascomycotina and in my last lecture I mentioned that motile cells are absent in this group completely. Now, after sexual reproduction, it has been observed that the plasmogamy and karyogamy are temporarily and specially separated. Because of this characteristic temporal and special separation, dicaryophase play an important role in the life history of Ascomycotina. Now comes to the characteristic feature of Basidiomycotina. <music>
nuclei, one marked red and another marked blue. But in case of secondary mycelium, you will find two different types of nuclei in each compartment of the constituent cell. So, in primary mycelium, the high phi contents haploid nuclei which are homokaryotic in nature, but in this case you will find dikaryotic condition. From this dikaryotic hyphae, ultimately the skeletal hyphae and binding hyphae are produced, which are mainly responsible for construction of macroscopic structure in basidiomycotina. These are called tertiary hyphae. The hyphal structure that may be the primary, secondary or tertiary, whatever it may be, are septate in nature. They are septa provided with a typical cross wall with a barrel sept pore called dolipore. Barrel sept dolipore is nothing but formed due to stretching of the septal pore rim as you can see in the diagram. This is the barrel sept stretching or inflation of the rim. This is the dolipore. And this dolipore remain guarded by two cap-like structures called parenthesome. This parenthesome may be continuous, that means non-porous or may be porous. But in this diagram, you can see porous parenthesome guarding the open ends of the pore. Now, asexual reproduction in basidiomycotina is very insignificant, but only the members of heterobasidiomycetid produce aseospores and uridospores, which are considered as the repeating spore because they serve the purpose of asexual reproduction. In this group of fungi, sex organs are totally absent, but high degree of sexuality is prevailed. In this case, two hyphal fusion, particularly coming from two different parentage, leads to sexual reproduction. Nuclear fusion alone serves the purpose of sexual reproduction in this group. And it always takes place in a dikaryotic hyphae. Basidium is considered as a sexual apparatus or sex apparatus within which the two nuclei coming from two different parentes fuses with each other form a zygote from which ultimately basidiospores are produced. Now, you can see that this is a hyphal structure, secondary hyphal structure of basidiomycotina. In this photomicrograph, you can observe presence of a small channel-like structure called clamps. And this type of connection is known as clamp connection. And this diagram indicates how synchronized cell division leads to formation of a dikaryotic hyphae. Now, in a dikaryotic hyphae, what happens? The nuclei coming from two different parentes fuses with each other and form a zygote-like structure, which undergoes meiosis and form two different types of nuclei, one from one parentes and other two from different parentes. And finally, from this, the basidium is produced. Basidium is typically a tetrasterigmate tetraspora structure and the spores, the characteristic sexual spore, basidiospores, are produced on a prong like small structure present on the or side of the basidium. In this case, you see that these are the sterigmata bearing terminal basidiospores. Now, basidiospores and Basidium, together with some sterile hyphae, constitute some macroscopic fractification of fruit bodies 
typically designated as vesidio cups. Vesidio cups may be of various types. In the diagram, pictures provided, you can see the vesidio cups of gill fungi, that is the member of agaricalis. This is the coral fungi, and this is the bracket fungi members of polyporosy. And this is the fine section of the gill where you can see the presence of basidium bearing terminal basidiospores. In case of pore fungi or the member of polyporosy, the basidium containing basidiospores line the inner surface of the pore. Now comes to the Deuteromycotina. <laughs> Deuteromycotina represent the second largest division of fungi where the asexually reproducing fungi are dumped. That means this group contains those fungi which reproduce asexually. Their sexual stage or perfect state or teleomorphs are either unknown or are absent altogether. In this group, mostly the asexually reproducing phase or state of the members of Ascomycotina and Basidiomycotina are included. Designation of taxa is usually preceded by the term form. The form indicates that their perfect state or the teleomorph is either not discovered or unknown so far. For example, form class, form order, form genus and so on. Whenever their sexual or perfect state is known, on the basis of the priority of their sexual state spore, they are shifted to their respective subdivision under the kingdom fungi. For example, you can see that penicillium represents the imperfect state or asexual stage of the fungus, of which perfect state or the teleomorph is known as Teleromyces and it is the member of Ascomycotina because sexual spore of penicillium is Ascospore. But in case of Aspergillus, you will find three different names for their perfect state spore. Aspergillus nidulens, imperfect state of the fungi Emericella, but Aspergillus glaucus is the imperfect state of Eurosium. Aspergillus fumigatus is the imperfect state of Neosartoria. Now, one can ask why three different names are used for a particular genus Aspergillus. It is mainly on the basis of whether a fungus producing Anthrodium and Ascogonium side by side or producing only Ascogonium, no Anthrodium or both Anthrodium and Ascogonium are not produced by the fungi. Whatever it may be, the structure and shifting of the spore, sexual spore particularly, their somatic hyphae composed of highly branched, well-developed mycelium and you can see the presence of septa in it. That means the vegetative hyphae are septate, highly branched structure. In this picture, you can see 
this is the septal pore rim and this is the septal pore through which the nuclei and other cell organelles passes from one cell to another. Now, reproduction of deuteromycotina takes place always by means of asexual spore because sex organs, sexual structures, sexual spores are altogether absent. So, the entire mode of reproduction is a sexual one. Like members of Ascomycotina, Deuteromycotina also produces conidiophore bearing terminal conidia as a means of their sexual reproduction. Now, like Ascomycotina, the conidiophores may be aggregated to form different types of fractifications for example, cinema or corymium, sporodochium, acervulus, pycnidium, the flusset structure mainly. These structures I have discussed in my lecture while discussing the members of Ascomycotina and their characteristics. In this particular group, sexual reproduction is altogether absent, but parasexuality is observed in this group. It mimics the sexual reproduction because sexual reproduction always leads to formation of a new generation with new genetic constituent. But in parasexuality, hyphae containing different nuclei of different genetic makeup fuses with each other, their nuclei fuses and ultimately meiosis, mitotic crossing over leads to variation in their population. So, parasexuality in this group in true sense mimic the sexual reproduction as such. Mm -hmm.